Hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry, and I am the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. We are looking at Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, once again tonight. I'm going to share some more thoughts with you regarding the prophecy of the second coming in Acts 1 and how, that, how we can harmonize that with the second coming of the Lord uh, in the rest of the New Testament, which places it, which places his coming in the first century in AD 70. Now, what we've done already is we've demonstrated to you that the dispensational or the premillennial claim that because Jesus left in a body visibly, he has to return in a body visibly. And they base that claim on the language of Acts chapter 1 and verse 11 in just the same way or in just the same manner. Let me read the text. Uh, the, the angel said to the men of Galilee, they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. So they say, look it, he left in a body, he left visibly in just the same way he must come. He must come in a body, he must come visibly. Well, we've demonstrated that host tropos, in just the same way or in like manner, translated differently in different versions of, of the Bible, can't mean specifically, precisely, exactly in just the same way, in just the same manner, okay? We've showed you comparative texts that use that same phrase, and it can't be pressed to mean exactly, specifically, in just the same way. We've also shown you that if, if the Lord actually came back in just the same way that he left, that would violate and that would contradict many other second coming texts that say he's going to come in a different manner, in flaming fire, on a white horse, in judgment. All these things weren't present at the ascension. So we have a contradiction if we maintain this exactly precise, specifically the same manner, okay? And what the dispensationalists emphasize about Acts 1, 11, and, and that prophecy of the second coming, they emphasize the body of Jesus, a bodily return, a visible bodily return. And I'm going to show you in this video and in the couple to come after that the emphasis is not on the body. Actually, we all know that based on a study of the second coming of the Lord text, second coming prophecies, there is no mention of a bodily return of Jesus ever. It's not even really hinted at, okay? It, it, he comes, it's his presence, it's his glory, it's his manifestation, but none of that has to mean a bodily return and nowhere in scripture for all of the texts that there are regarding the second coming nowhere does it emphasize a body especially in acts chapter one okay so uh i've only got a few minutes i want to get into this what i want to do is i want to show you what the emphasis is in other words i want to show you what the what they are emphasizing or, or how they are emphasizing the way he left which will be the way he came, okay? Not will come, did come. So I'm going to show you the emphasis here. Watch the text. Acts 1 and verse, let's read verses 9 to 11. And after he had said these things, he was, lift, uh, he, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. We've got a cloud in this text, okay? A cloud. And as they were gazing intently into the, in heaven... While he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you standing? Why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Heaven, the Greek word uranos, is mentioned four times in this text, and uh, the cloud nephel is mentioned once. Listen, body, um, flesh is not mentioned at all in this text. It's not, it's not the emphasis. The emphasis is the Lord was received into heaven in the cloud, okay? And watch this. Let's, let's go to a parallel text, a, 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 uh, another ascension text, and watch, the, watch what's emphasized once again, okay? Go with me to Luke chapter 24. And let's read verses... 24 to 26, just to keep this in a bit of a context, okay? Although it's, it's, it's a completely parallel text, I want you to see these verses. Luke 24 and verses 25 
and 26. Watch this. Jesus said, And he said to them, O foolish men and slow of heart, to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Now, now watch this. This is the ascension. He's referring to entering into his glory, ascending into his glory. Okay? Go down to verses 49 to 51. Watch this. Here's where it's parallel to Acts 1, 9 to 11. 49 to 51. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. There's a blessing. And while he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. Now, here's an identical parallel text to Acts 1, 9-11, and the emphasis is not on a body. It's on the Lord blessing them and being received up into heaven, which is into glory. Okay? So here, in two parallel texts of the ascension of Jesus Christ, the emphasis is not on a body. It's on the Lord being received up in a cloud, into glory, and into heaven. Now watch this. Go to another text. This is not a ascension text, but it is it is uh, ref reflecting and commenting on the ascension. First Timothy, chapter three and verse sixteen. Watch this. Paul says, "By common confession, great is the mystery of godliness. Who he who was revealed in the flesh was vindicated in the, in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world." taken up in glory. Again, an, a, a reference to the ascension of Christ, a parallel um, text in that sense to Acts 1 and 11, and the emphasis is not on a body. It's on him being taken up into glory. So listen, by comparing Acts 1 with Luke 24, which is a a perfectly parallel ascension text, and 1 Timothy chapter 3, which is commenting on the ascension, we find that there is no emphasis on the body of Jesus, a bodily ascension or a bodily return. There is nothing mentioning that. Instead, the emphasis is on heaven, the cloud, glory, and blessing. Okay? Uranus heaven is mentioned four times. Blessing, yeah, eulogio is mentioned twice. The cloud is mentioned once, and glory is mentioned several times, at least at least twice in these texts. This is the emphasis: the Lord Jesus Christ being received up. Watch this in the glory cloud into heaven while he was blessing his disciples. So, so listen. I agree with the dispensationalists in this sense: as he was taken up, so shall he return. But the emphasis is not on the body. How was he taken up? Well, he was taken up in the glory cloud, which received him into heaven, okay, while well, he blessed his disciples. So he was taken up while, while pronouncing a blessing in glory and in the, in the Shekinah glory cloud of Jehovah. He was received into, into glory. That's how he left. So listen. How is he going to come? He's going to come in the Shekinah glory presence in the glory cloud of, of his father in blessing. Are you with me? That's how he left. That's how he's going to come. Now ask yourself a question. Does that contradict any other second coming texts? I don't think so. We're going to look at some comparative texts in the next video regarding the Lord coming in the clouds. Or on the cloud, all right, just different ways of, of, of uh, expressing that coming. In glory, Matthew 16, Matthew chapter 24, right? What about in blessing? That's Hebrews chapter 9, 28. In salvation is blessing. He's going to come in sal He's going to come in blessing. Are you with me? And he's going to return from heaven. Just as you have seen him go, so shall he come. They saw him leave in a cloud into glory, blessing into heaven. And listen, the New Testament is full of texts which emphasize those very things, not a body. They emphasize that he's going to return. He was going to return in the cloud, in glory, with salvation, with the blessing, 
and he's going to come from heaven. That's the emphasis of Acts chapter 1, 9 to 11. Not a bodily return, not a bodily ascension. It's in glory, it's in blessing, it's in power, it's in the cloud, and it's out of heaven. We're going to see all that next time on Answers on Eschatology. And bye for now.